On this alignment question, which is related to the interpretability question, which which just, you know, interpretability just means understanding what's actually going on inside the things. Because as I understand it, like the engineer's understanding of what's going on inside these things is in some ways comparable to like, if you imagine like somebody who invented natural selection and then watched it build these brains, like they wouldn't understand what's going on in the brains, right? <laughs> and, and it's, exactly. And, and so... Um, the, uh, the idea is that interpretability, understanding what is going on could be good and could lead to alignment. That is to say, AI whose values and goals are aligned with ours or whatever. It's not totally clear to me how that's the case. It's like, I have trouble. I mean, first of all, of course, interpretability, that could also be used by bad actors. Like they understand that if they tweak this one thing, it'll really go haywire. Um, you know, they can learn that through interpretability. But secondly, I just have trouble kind of imagining like what would aligned AI be like? So maybe we should start at that end and and ask like, what is your the goal of conjecture? What What is your dream AGI? What properties would it have that it wouldn't have if we just let things uh, evolve on their current trajectory? This is a great question, and this is going to get deep. <laughs> so <laughs> let's 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 dive in. Um, so I fully agree with what you're saying about interpretability research, and I, this is something I've changed my mind about uh, over just like the last year or two. Um, I used to be way more optimistic about interpretability and general alignment research and such. Um, I've become a lot more pessimistic. Um, I actually gave a talk recently at MIT about this, um, where it was an interpretability conference and everyone was like, wow, it's so nice. And look at this thing we found out and ooh, it's gonna make everything good. And my talk was basically, this is dangerous. If you can understand something, you can control it and you can make it stronger. You can make it worse. Um, it has to be the case. If we, de we develop thermodynamics and it allowed us to build better steam boilers, this is the same thing that you should expect to happen. If we understand our AI is better, you should get better at controlling them, and you should also get better at making them stronger. This is, and we live in a very adversarial world. The world we currently live in is extremely adversarial. If you develop a technique which is meant for control, let's say like RLHF, it doesn't exactly matter what this is for the moment, but this is which a is reinforcement that, through uh, human mm -hmm. feedback, basically. Yes. This is like how they kind of, once it's done the training, they, they, for among other reasons, to build the so-called guardrails, uh, they, 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 they subject it to a lot of human feedback and humans say, I didn't like this response. This response offended me. It was stupid yeah. or whatever. Go ahead. Yeah. So in a sense, you can think of this kind of as a proto alignment, you know, sort of technique, right? Like not really, but it's not robust by any means, right. but like it's something, right? So one thing that could have happened was they see, oh, we can use this to constrain our things and like to use, you know, smaller, more constrained models that still do what we want. Great. And then they use, you know, smaller models, they're more constrained, et cetera. But this is not what happened. Of course, they just took the biggest models they could and used it to teach it as many new skills as possible, as fast as possible. Not just for the guardrails, they also use it to teach them new things, how to, you know, do more math and how to reason better and how to do whatever. Mm -hmm. So if you're a nice alignment researcher and you come with RLHF and you're like, wow, this is the thing that will help us control and bound our things and you publish it, well, congrats, you just made everything worse. You just made the world worse. And this is this is the default. So this is the truly, this is why, this is one of the core reasons why I'm so pessimistic, not the only reason, but this is one of the core reasons is any good alignment research that's actually, actually helpful is also dangerous. This is not a coincidence. It's not like, oh, you know, happens to you. This is inherent because any alignment resource that actually gets you control will also make you better at wielding it for negativity things, the negative mm -hmm. things. So what happens is, is that even, you know, I develop some great techniques that give me super good control over my AI, let's say super fantastic techniques. And I publish these online. What happens? Well, you know, Meta and OpenAI and whatever immediately applies them to the AI to build AGI and, you know, you know, that's it. Right. And so we're in this extremely, extremely messed up, like social situation where, you know, our usual academic norms of like openness and sharing your results and whatever, which is how we do science generally don't work. Like, you know, every time someone posts something online, you know, and then, you know, 
then Meta, OpenAI, China, whoever will immediately abuse it. It's just how the world we live in. Mm -hmm. So interpretability is in this category. Interpretability in theory is the groundwork for co building controllable AIs, building aligned AIs. Because we don't even understand them. Well, how do we want to control them? Like, but like if we could understand the building blocks and we could move them around and we could debug them, you know, hypothetically, like code, well, that's progress. Now we could actually like try to understand how the internals work and build theories and predictions and debuggers and stuff like this. But if you did this, I mean, you want to think, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, people use it to build AGI. Not going to build it to build aligned AGI because, as we said earlier, aligned AGI, type two, three, four AGI is much harder than type one. Mm -hmm. So, this only works, this is only safe if you can prevent people from using, from building a type one and waiting until you can get a two, three, or four. And, you know, maybe OpenAI would do this, right? Maybe they would be super careful. I don't know. But OpenAI, Anthropic, DeepMind, Character AI, inflection, Chinese government, US government, mm -hmm. you know, Mistral, every single one of them. Much harder to say that every single one of them would be as careful as necessary. So interpretability is really hard. And it's a, du a dual use technology, the same way as any alignment technology. And this is part of why I build conjecture in a sense that we don't publish our research by default. We mm -hmm. share it, you know, maybe with like trusted researchers who we know very well and we trust very deeply, but we by default don't publish this kind of stuff for these reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then let's uh, jump to whatever level four. Suppose you have kept people, you know, we're, we're, we are, it, it's 10 years from now. We understand these things much better. You have somehow kept people from misusing that understanding as it has developed, and you apply the understanding to create an aligned AI. What properties would the aligned AI have? So when I use the word aligned, I usually mean like a type four system, a system that truly is safe to anyone. Like it's a system where everyone on planet Earth basically agrees, mm -hmm. would, would agree that turning it on is a good idea rather than a bad idea. This is an incredibly advanced piece of technology. This is way beyond anything our, our species has built in the past. So it's like, a, be, is, is it like a benevolent mm -hmm. God or like a benevolent nanny? Or, you know, it's like, it's like, it, it, it has to be kind of morally good in our sense of the term yes. and have concern for sentient beings. Yes. A type four system would be a benevolent God. That would be a, the only accurate description. So of that's what, what we want to build like. is a benevolent God. Whew. I'm not sure, but <laughs> it's something that people sure are trying to build. So, I per personally am working on type two systems before okay. I don't even know how to build a type four system. Oh, God forbid. I have some ideas of how to build type four systems, um, but they're not very well, What's good. a type two uh, system? Well, I mean, there has to be some degree of benevolence, right? I mean, I mean, isn't that the idea all along the way that it's going to, in a sense, make the right value judgments, it, 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 right? Event eventually, yes. So the, what, the way a type two system would look is like a tool. It would be a system which itself doesn't have a good type two system. It would be a thing that doesn't really have volition, not really an agent. It's more like an extension of a human. Uh, these are the things that Conjecture works on primarily. Our flavor of this research is what we call cognitive emulation or CoM. And this is something, tools that are meant to solve problems and reason in the way humans reason and solve problems. And these are not meant to be agents. They're not systems that you turn loose on the world. It's more like a suite of tools a human slots into and allows them to perform massive amount of parallel labor mm -hmm. in very effective ways. I'm happy to go more on that in a second, but just for that, uh, to get back to the typo typology, a system like this is you know, maybe a type two or a type three system. Like it is, it's the first system is probably going to be quite brittle in that you have to be, you'll have this huge, like, you know, 200 page readme file of like what not to do. Like don't, don't, don't change this parameter. Don't do this. Never let it run for more than X steps, et cetera, et cetera, that keep it, you know, contained. And then you'll have also, then you have, so you'll have a huge like list of constraints. Like, you know, don't use more than this much computing power. Cause we don't know what happens. We know it's safe until this level, but beyond that, who knows, don't try. Um, so it's not robust to someone being not careful. If you weren't careful, it would probably, you know, 
self-improve or go crazy or just blow up or something. And then it's also about robust to misuse. If you tell this thing to shoot yourself, shoot you in the foot, it takes off the whole leg. Mm -hmm. So you'd also be very careful with what you use it for. I, you know, in a good world, we don't even have to build this and like government regulates everything and everyone comes together and we all, you know, all scientists in the world agree to put a moratorium on this research and all come together to work internationally on super safe AGI or whatever. That would be the good outcome. So to me, any world in which a small group of people or even a medium sized group of people builds anything in the AGI typography is already a bad world. The good world is we as a species get our shit together and start coordinating. We get our politics, mm. you know, organized. We start, you know, working together. That's a good world. But I yeah. don't think we're in a good world. Thanks for watching Non-Zero Clips. To hear more of this conversation and others like it, subscribe to the Non-Zero YouTube channel or the Non-Zero podcast feed. And to gain access to exclusive podcast content, subscribe to Robert Wright's Non-Zero newsletter on Substack.